well, it's nice to be back here for a new semester. Uh, I, I, I listened to the last two uh, Bible studies uh, on this topic of the normal Christian experience. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't know me, so my name is Brady. Uh, I, I work uh, here at, OS, at, at the medical center. Um, I did my uh, master's here at Ohio State, so uh, familiar with this, this place. And I've been uh, in these Bible studies, uh, helping with these Bible studies for, I don't know, I think we started in 26, 2017. Yeah, so uh, whatever that is, five, five years or something. Um, <clears throat> so, and in fact, as I was preparing this Bible study, which is on calling on the name of the Lord, I was studying, I was considering, and I was like, I feel like I've talked about this before. In fact, I had. And so, uh, if you have the time, you know, you can go on to uh, uh, our Christians on campus. Uh, I still use YouTube because I'm, you know, I don't know what other options there are, but that's what I use because that's what I know. Um, but you can go to, if you're subscribed to the Christians on Campus, I think it was back in 2021. So two years ago, I shared on this. And it was actually on, uh, the topic was on uh, the great men in Genesis, and it was on uh, Enosh. So uh, I'm not going to share the same thing there. So if you do, if, you're, if you want to hear a little bit different um, uh, uh, you know, approach to this matter, you can check out that one uh, uh, on Enosh. <clears throat> but... Uh, you know, we're talking about the normal Christian exper- experience. And, um, and I thought, you know, in order to really, uh, you know, you can't really talk about the experience without talking about your own experience. And so I thought I would start this t- tonight with um, sharing a little bit of my testimony. And uh, I would say that my initial experience was probably an abnormal experience. Uh, uh, the Christian experience. However, I would also say it is a typical experience. (laughs) It's a typical, but it is not normal. (laughs) So what we're talking about is the normal experience, uh, but I'm going to give a little bit of a a, a contrast in in my testimony. So uh, I I, I got saved when uh, I was a sophomore in college. So uh, that was a number of years ago, but even though it is a very, uh, you know, I think around 15 years ago, um, I still remember that experience very clearly. I was in my dorm, I was lying on the top bunk at around 11 p.m. Uh, on a Sunday night in May, and I remember crying out to the Lord. And uh, if you've been in our Sunday morning fellowships, we've, uh, we've been covering this matter of the Lord's appearing to us. And I could really say that night I experienced the Lord's appearing to me. Very real and very life-changing. Um, and then, it, you know, uh, just as life goes on, it took about six months before uh, I really began to pursue seriously uh, the Lord. And, um, and, and when I consider my experience, I think of it as in kind of like three, I would say three buckets. So the first one that I focused on as a young believer was I wanted to be a good Christian because uh, I was a sinful person. I was very clear about that I was a sinner, that I was living and doing sinful things. So my desire was, as a believer, I needed to turn my life around. So my first focus, a lot of my focus in my early Christian life was, how can I be a better Christian? The second was, I felt, I knew that in the Word, the Lord called us to serve, and we needed to give ourselves to serve Him. And so I... uh, you know, I, I joined a, a youth group that I was a young adult leader for. Um, I began to preach the gospel. And, uh, and then the third one, the third bucket, is I knew we needed to praise God and we needed to give glory to Him. Um, <clears throat> and so how I, how I pursued these three things, so in the first one about being a good Christian, I, 
my time in the Word was very much spent on how to deal with sin, how to deal with the negative things, and how to be, you know, a better person. So a lot of the word, the words that stuck out to me, things like gird yourself with humility, right? Guard your heart, you know, flee youthful lusts. All these things impress me. And I was, those were the words that, that, that I use, you know, whenever I would want to go commit something, I had verses memorized as a way to, you know, strengthen me, right? Um, and then a lot of my prayer was spent, Lord, you know, don't bring me into temptation. Keep me out of these things. And then, uh, and then regarding my serving, right, as I said, I, spent, I, I, would, I would spend time with other believers to serve in youth groups. I would pray for others, right? A lot of my prayer if it wasn't spent on getting, you know, improving myself, it was on for, for other salvation. And then in my praising of the Lord, I would, you know, in our worship times, I would praise the Lord, but I would say a lot of my praising was very much to a God that was in the heavens, a, a kind of a, a, you know, the almighty God, right? The, the God is great. But um, in all of these things, you know, these are all, very important things that we, you know, we need, and we'll talk about, I believe, we'll talk about dealing with sins. That's an important aspect of being a Christian. It is important that we serve because we are slaves of Christ, right? And we need to praise Him, and we need to give glory to Him. But as I did these things, and it was about a year, uh, I would say, you know, by the time I got to my seat, uh, uh, my senior year, or maybe near the end of my junior year, so about a year, year and a half later, after being saved, I was just not satisfied. Even though I was doing so many good things, I felt empty. I still felt like I just, I, I'm tired. I'm discouraged. Even sometimes I will be depressed. I don't know what I'm doing. And, um, and one time, I, and so I met, I met this uh, uh, other believer, this brother on campus. And we began to fellowship, and he asked me something that, that really, it, it was foreign to me. But he said, Brady, what did you enjoy in the Word this morning? What did you enjoy? And I thought, what do you mean? I mean, I've been, I was in the Word that morning. I've been convicted, right? I read his verse and it convicted me. I've been, uh, you know, impressed with something, you know. I've felt the spirits moving, but I wouldn't say that I enjoyed. That's not a word I would use. And so I began to wonder, what does that mean? And as I began this fellowship, I realized this was a person that had, had something more that I, I did not have. And, uh, and so I want to, to just share this um, <clears throat> because I think a lot of us have this typical experience where we are doing a lot of things outwardly. Um, in fact, I would say we have a lot of experience of a positional um, salvation experience. I was once here, and now I'm here, right? I was once facing this direction, and now I'm facing this direction. Positional. But as um, Eric shared in the first week of our Bible study, he talked about regeneration, right? And, uh, and so I, I, I'll come to this point here. So the first point here says that today, Jesus Christ is not only our Savior, but also the life-giving spirit, the life-giving breath for our spiritual being and living. And I want to point to the second verse there, 1 Corinthians 15, 45. Uh, the second half of that verse, it says, The last Adam, who is Christ, became a life-giving spirit. So here we see, when the Lord resurrected, 
He became a life-giving spirit, right? That means the spirit's function is to give life. That's, that's what he wants to do. He wants to give life, right? We want to maybe work, right? We would work for the Lord, but here he says, it shows us that as the spirit, he gives life. And so... This is why, if, if, you, uh, if you've read 1 Peter in chapter 2, Peter calls the new believers, he says that they are newborn babes. Right? They're newborn babes because they've received a new life. They've been regenerated. And then, you know, uh, in the physical life, you know, when a baby is first born, what's the most important thing when they come out of the womb? What's the most important thing that they do? They have to breathe. Right? When they come out, they need to learn how to breathe. That's the most important thing. Right? When they come out, we're not, all right, son, you know, when my son was born, you know, when he came out, you know, my biggest concern was, "Ah, is he crying? Did I hear the cry? Right? It wasn't, is he able to walk yet? Right? (laughs) Can he, can he mow the lawn yet? No, <laughs> I don't care about those things. All I care about, can he breathe? Is he breathing okay? Because his breathing is what's going to give him the life that allow him to live. <laughs> right? Without his breath, there is no way to live. So, in our Christian life, right, we've, been, we've received new life. We've been born again. And what's the first thing we need to learn to do? Well, you know, when the Lord resurrected, you know the first thing that he did with his disciples? You know, the disciples were were, uh, in John 20. They're in this room. The doors are closed. You can't get in. All of a sudden, the Lord appears to them. And he says, you know, he says... uh, what does he say? John 20, 22. He, in John 20, 20, 21, he said, I send you. And when he said, I send you, what did he do? It says, and when he had said this, he breathed into them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. All right? The first thing he did when he resurrected as, a, as the Spirit The first thing he did was breathe before he charged them to go and disciple the nations, right? Because he does that in Matthew 28. Go, therefore, disciple the nations. But before he breathes into them, right? This must have had such an impression on them. You know, I think, you know, when when, when the Lord breathed into them, the first thing is the fact that this spirit, he says, receive the Holy Spirit, The fact that this spirit is his breath indicates that the spirit is the Lord himself, right? So when we receive the spirit, we receive the Lord. And the second thing is that when he breathes into them this way, he's showing them that the spirit is something within, something for their living Right? He didn't start with pouring oil on them and say, receive the Holy Spirit. He breathed into them, indicating this is something for their living within. Right? And then you know the fact that he breathed into them, he's showing them that the Spirit is breathable. <laughs> right? I don't know what their response, I mean, what would your response be? If, I don't even know what that looks like when the Lord breathed into them. But they must have breathed it in, right? I mean, I guess. And that must have had such an impression. Oh, the Lord now is breathable. (laughs) Right? Isn't that interesting? So now, if we we come to this verse, Lamentations 3, 55 and 56, because now we got to know, all right, we know the Lord is breathable. We know He's the breath. As a spirit, He's the breath. Now we need to breathe him in. How do we breathe in the Lord? Right? Lamentations 
He says, I called upon your name, O Jehovah, from the lowest pit. You have heard my voice. Do not hide your ear at my breathing, at my cry. So here, Jeremiah relates the two. Breathing with calling on the Lord. Right? And he actually also, it's uh, not only breathing, actually it's a crying. You know, like I said, with my, when, my, when my son was born, when my daughter was born, right? What do I want to listen to? You can't really hear if they're breathing, but you can hear a cry, right? And when they're crying, you know they're breathing, right? So sometimes, right? So we need to learn, as Christians, we need to learn how to cry and breathe by calling on the Lord. You know, so... Right? When I talked about my experience, right, I spent a lot of time doing, but not a lot of time breathing. Right? And we breathe, just like we sang in this song, right? It's called, oh Lord. Right? Surely, I'm sure all of us have done that, <laughs> even whether we realize it or not. Right? Maybe you wake up in the morning, oh Lord Jesus, Lord. Sometimes it's a breathing out. Right, we're breathing out the negative things. Right, we. Right? There's a there's a hymn by a, 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 a minister named A. B. Simpson, and he talks about I'm breathing out my sorrow, breathing out my sin. He's breathing in the fullness of the Lord. Right, I'm breathing all you are. Right, this is what we do when we call on the Lord. Oh Lord, you know. But sometimes, right, we we forget to breathe, and instead we just want to do. Um, have anyone here, is anyone here a runner? What's the most you've, uh, longest distance you've run? Um, I've done 10K. 10K? Anybody else run? Anything? Right. Not a lot of runs, apparently. That's okay. That's okay. I'm not really much of a runner either. Um, but I guarantee you, if you've ever run, uh, you, you, you realize you also have to breathe, even while you're running, right? No one just... Starts the race, right? Did you do that when you get in the... You just take one deep breath. Then you start running for, you know, I don't think that's going to work, right? So isn't that how we are with the Lord sometimes, right? Oh, Lord. And then, all right, now I'm going to go throughout my day and do my things, right? Oh, I got to breathe, right? We need to learn to call all the time, right? We never stop breathing in our human life. We shouldn't stop breathing in our Christian life. Oh, Lord, right, as we're walking to class. Lord Jesus. Right? It's the simplest prayer. Right? It doesn't require a lot of effort. Not, we're not praying for things or for, for this or that. We're just, Lord. Right? We're receiving. We're getting supplied. Right? And then, you know, not only is it breath. Right? You know, the next thing when a baby is born, right, after you know they're breathing, what do they need to do next? They need to learn how to drink. They got to drink milk, right? That's what nourishes them, right? And so what happens in our Christian life? When we're breathing, we also need to learn how to drink. <laughs> so the second point here, when we call on the Lord, right, not only we enjoy Him as a spiritual breath, but we enjoy Him as our spiritual drink, as the water of life. So in Isaiah, it says, Therefore you will draw water with rejoicing, from the springs of salvation, and you will say in that day, give thanks to Jehovah, call upon His name. Right? When we call on His name, we draw water. Right? We are drinking the water of life. We are drinking the Spirit as the water of life, supplying us, causing us to be filled and supplied so that we can, you know, if you're running, right? if you're on a marathon, right? I, um, you know, sometimes you have people standing along because as you're running, you're getting a little tired. You need a cup of water, right? You got people standing there handing you a little water, right? You, you take another refreshing drink and you keep going, right? Sometimes we just need a... I would say, in a sense, that drinking, it's a little deeper, right? When we call on the Lord and are breathing, maybe, Lord Jesus, oh Lord, I need you. Lord, oh Lord. But then sometimes we need to take a drink. And maybe that's a little... Oh, Lord, <laughs> Lord Jesus, I need you. Oh, Lord. Um, and then, 
I, I'll share, I want to share experience, but I want to go to this next point real quick. Actually, so the, uh, Psalm 116, it says, I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name. Right? We take the cup. How do we take the cup? It's by calling. And then it says, when we call on the Lord, we are saved into the enjoyment of his riches. So this, uh, in Romans it says, For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all and rich to all who call upon him. Right? I'm going to stop there for a second. Right? He is Lord of all and he is rich to all who call upon him. Isn't that something? Have you read that verse before? The Lord is rich. That surely indicates enjoyment. Right. And uh, this is when I realized what that brother was telling me when I was on the campus. I say, what did you enjoy? Right, because the Lord is rich to all who call. And I remember there was one time when I discovered this, when I realized how rich the Lord was. I was, uh, I was in an apartment um, there was uh, another uh, young brother, same age as me. We were companions. And then we had another friend who uh, was getting ready to go on a gospel trip. And, uh, and we began, we, we started, we felt like he was getting ready to leave. And I don't know if we were ever going to see him again. So, so we decided to, so we, so we prayed together. We prayed for the trip. And we said, you know, um, you know Lord, be with, be with our brother. Bless his going there. And then at a certain point, we just stopped praying things. And one of them just said, Jesus is Lord. And then the other one was like, Jesus is Lord. And they were like, Lord Jesus. Jesus is Lord. And I tell you, we just kept saying that for like 10 minutes. And at the end of it, we were on a different planet. I mean, we were filled with joy. Right? We... we we hadn't prayed for much outwardly, but inwardly we were drinking and we were enjoying the riches of Christ. Because, because why? The Spirit, right, is the Lord Himself. And when we receive the Lord by calling on His name, we enjoy all He is and all He has and all His riches. And uh, I, so I was, um, I'll share one other thing I, I realized um, <clears throat> so that was my senior year. And I would say I kind of stumbled upon that like accidentally, like that night. I was like, I don't know what we did that made it so enjoyable. I don't, I think I connected that, oh, the Lord's name, it's, it's wonderful. But, it, but I didn't really continue it until another year later, I was in England and I was sitting in a church meeting and, and I was like, I, 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 I was kind of just, you know, I was there, and uh, nothing really, I, I wasn't like in a great spot, I wasn't super happy or anything, but this one person called a song, and uh, the song was, um, is, uh, How Sweet the Name of Jesus, and I think it was like, Jesus, oh how sweet the name, Jesus, every day the same, and I always was singing, I was like, the Lord's name is sweet. The Lord's name is wonderful. And, and I used to journal a lot. And so I, had to, I went back, um, uh, it was two nights ago. I was like, I, I just wanted to see, because I, I used to journal a lot, especially when, um, when I was right out of college. And uh, I was looking at some of my journaling, and, and, that, and I can pinpoint, that was, I think it was, it must have been around December of January of 20, 2009. And, uh, and I, well, 2008, 2009, and I, um, I was reading some of my, you know, writing from before that time and then after, and it was so incredible how different. Here I was, Lord, I'm feeling discouraged today. I feel like I need you. And then the next one, it was like, oh, Lord Jesus, I love you. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. And then the next, the next day, Lord Jesus, you're so wonderful. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, you're so, right? It was like, what? Right? There was something that I realized, the Lord is rich to all who call, right? So, and it says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that saved there is not just 
saved initially. Yes, we need a call to get saved for our initial salvation. But, right, it's rich to all calls upon him, and whoever calls upon the Lord shall be saved. Right? That refers even to our outward situation. Right? Sometimes, are you ever in a situation where, uh, you know, maybe you're about to lose your temper, right? And instead of letting go, just say, Oh, Lord! Lord Jesus, you will get saved. You will get saved from that, right? You feel like you're going to fall into something, right? You don't know what to do. Maybe, some, maybe a friend, you know, that you've been praying for, and they're like, you know what? I'm feeling really discouraged. And you're like, have you ever had, like, I don't know what to tell them. I don't know what to say. Well, in that moment, just call, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I need you. And then in that supply, the Lord will give you a way to speak to that person. And then just to, to conclude here, I just, I, I just had to add this point because um, I just thought it was, I, I like this, this phrasing. We have been called to call. <laughs> All right? So in 1 Corinthians, it says, To the church of God which is in Corinth, to those who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, the called saints, with all those who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In, or Lord Jesus, in every place, right? They're the called saints, and they call, right? And uh, in, in 2 Timothy, it says, right, I, I mentioned this verse at the beginning, but flee youthful lust. I usually stopped there, right? But flee youthful. Amen, Lord. I need to flee. But it says, and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, right? The Lord is calling us to call on Him. And even, you know, the Apostle Paul, when he was Saul, do you know how he identified the Christians of that time? It said he had the authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. So right, he, he saw the callers. Right? They said, Lord, he's going to prison. I'm putting this one in prison, right? He would find those who called. But then you know what? When he got saved, do you know what he did? Right? The, the Lord told him, And now why do you delay? Rise up and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. The one who persecuted the callers became a caller himself. Right? This is how much the, that the apostle was, was saved from his situation. He realized, right, calling was what a normal Christian does. They call on the Lord. And he became one. And in fact, if you read his epistles, you realize he loved to call on the Lord. <laughs> right? So, um, <clears throat> so again, I say, right, when I share my testimony in the beginning, all of these things are very good. Right? We need to deal with sins. We need to serve the Lord. We need to praise the Lord. But, those are a lot of things we do outwardly. But inwardly, are we taking care of our breathing and our drinking? Right? right? This is a, the, the, the Christian life as a race, right? And we don't want to hold our breath until the end. We want to make sure we are breathing, we are drinking by calling on the Lord. So I want to conclude with the focus, and maybe we could read this all together. If we call on the name of the Lord... We will enter into the riches of Christ. Through our enjoyment of Christ, we will spontaneously grow in a normal yet miraculous way. We have been called by God to call on His name in every place and every occasion.